so uh, before we finish this uh, session here so probably the final thing i just want to discuss because the next session we are going to uh, getting into some the final class for the subnetting where we get into some the most final and the last final class and the main class i can say because the first two classes the previous class and this class is going to lay very good foundations for your subnetting so when you have a proper foundations on how the calculation process goes it becomes very easy for you to minimize your time in calculating the submitting and understanding the concepts okay so that's a final step where i'll be discussing uh, how the default design networks how to design them and some vlsm calculations and also we'll try to understand how the questions will be asked in your certifications or interviews submitting uh, bits and how to solve them probably you'll find some more questions on submitting so that is the final step actually which is very important but these two classes are foundations so before i just finish off uh, this session here i just want to finally discuss one thing that is slash value so if you remember in all our examples whenever we are uh, trying to write the examples here we are going to write this as slash value slash 26 that is nothing but a uh, total network bits so when you are writing total network bits we are writing in the form of slash value now what is exactly that slash value represents so finally we'll summarize what is slash value slash value in general it represents your total network bits it represents your total network bits like by default you know a class b class c class a class by default the subnet mask is 255000 and the default subnet mask for b class is 255255000 and the default submit mask for c class is 255255250 okay so now and we also know that each and every portion represents 8 bits so this is something what we learn in our basic ip addressing class so now ip addressing is very basic for us now so because we are getting into some advanced ip addressing called submitting concepts but still uh, you should remember the basics as well so on by default a class contains 8 network bits B class contains 16 network bits and C class contains 24 network bits. So now if I say if I just take an example I have a scenario diagram when you when you get into some production networks when you see some scenario diagrams or even when you face uh, certification questions you will be given a question like this you have a router uh, connecting to some some devices here and the IP address on this device is 192.168.1.10 is the IP address. and there is no subnet mask mentioned here in the diagram let's say let's say i have given you a scenario and i did not mention you a subnet mask now what in general i will understand i'll i'll just try to figure out if i just see any ip address any ip address like even if i go here but definitely you have to give ip address but in documentations in scenarios we don't really give uh, uh, some more in detail information here so probably you have seen if i give a diagram to you and if i ask you a question that do something and you are going to troubleshoot it and you are going to find out what is the ip address and you have seen the documentation and you have seen this documentation diagram have this ip address but there's no subnet mask mentioned so what i am going to assume that it's a 192 so 192 comes in the c class range and i am going to assume it as default subnet mask that is something what i understand in general okay So whenever you are writing default subnet mask, which means the range starts from zero and so on to fifty five, okay. But in case, as per your real production network, you are not using the default C class subnet mask. You are actually using the subnet mask of two five five two five five two five five one ninety two as a subnet mask. But in case if you are using anything other than default subnet mask, then it is mandatory for you to mention, because whenever I see any address with one ninety two one sixty eight one dot ten. i will simply assume as the default subnet mask so that is something zero which i which are really uh using the default subnet mask which means if you are using other than default it becomes mandatory for you to mention but defining the subnet mask in this format is a little bit much lengthier in the documentations in the scenario diagrams probably you'll see the same thing written as like this so it's another representation of this so now you can ask me where is the subnet mask written here because if there is no subnet mask i cannot understand the range because the subnet mask tells the size of the network subnet mask tells where the ip address starts and where it ends 
what is the network id what is the broadcast id all these things without submit mask it becomes really difficult uh, it's actually i cannot e easily find out why how the range is identified so whenever you write this submit mask 255 represents 8 bits 255 represents 8 bits 255 represents 8 bits and 192 represents 2 bits if you remember our uh, table here 192 represents 2 bits means there are two network bits so which means total there are 8 plus 8 16 16 plus 8 60 uh, 24 24 plus 2 total there are 24 network bits so instead of writing in this format we are simply writing in this format so slash value represents total network bits and when we are writing the submit mask submit mask is nothing but adding your network bits right you are just converting your network binary to decimal so if you write like this this is correct but in practical when we design when we apply to any device we assign in this format but when you see most of the documentation scenarios even in the examinations or even exams or in documentations of any real production networks they will not write in this format so normally you don't see in this format instead you'll see it is written like this it's slash 26 okay so which means it's another way of writing your submit mask so submit mask is mandatory to mention but we are not writing the complete submit mask we are just representing as total network bits that's what we are doing here okay so so i hope you got the you got the understanding why why we write the slash value because whenever you see this is something so the default slash value of a class is slash 8 because there is only one network portion the default slash value for b class is slash 16 and the default slash value is slash 24 which means there are by default 24 network bits remaining all are 8 there are 16 network bits and 16 host bits there are 8 network bits and 24 the same thing what we learn but we are just trying to understand uh, why exactly you see in slash format whenever you see slash format Uh, you need to understand that it is actually representing your submit mask only so that's the reason if you see my examples here whenever i write the range i made the habit of writing slash value in the last so this is something which you need to uh, make the habit of writing whenever you write the range you make sure that you also write the slash value in the end based on this i can understand slash 26 means there are 8 8 8 24 2 2 bits host similar way if i take another example here When I say slash twenty three means twenty three means eight eight seven zero, which means eight eight seven means two fifty four zero. So finally, what we do is we'll try to do some examples, some conversions, uh, some practice. I can say. So I'll give some examples here. Slash twenty. Okay. So I'll just try to just try down here some exercises on converting the slash value. So slash twenty, I can say slash eighteen, and slash twenty three, slash twenty five. Anyway, I'm just giving some exercises for you. So when you, you can just note down these exercises. So to just uh, have a conversion method, I'll do two three examples for understanding slash nineteen. Mm, let's say slash twenty eight. Slash twenty nine, and then slash thirty, and then slash twenty two, and then slash twenty. I think I I did slash twenty. Okay, so probably can just take down this example. So I'll do any one. Let's say I'll I'll do slash twenty three, slash nineteen, or slash any other example. So let let me do some examples here. So I'm going to say slash twenty. So whenever you see slash value, you should be in a position to find what is the equivalent submit mask for that. So in my example, it is uh, whenever you write, we are writing. So slash twenty means in one portion you cannot write more than eight bits. So again, I am writing eight bits. So eight plus eight becomes sixteen. So I can write four, which means twenty. Eight plus eight, sixteen. Sixteen plus four, twenty. And if you don't have anything, just write zero. And you have to refer the table. This table, if you remember our table here. So eight bits represents two fifty five, and four bits represents two forty. that's what i am doing so whenever you see slash 20 you have to understand that okay 20 represents the submit mask of 255255240.0 this is very important to have understanding okay so similar way if i take one more example slash 17 so 
So slash 17 means 8 bits, 8 bits. 8 plus 8 is 16, 16 plus 1 bit and then 0. So if you add 8 bits, 8 bits, 1 bit means 128 or 0. So whenever I write slash 17, you have to understand this is the equivalent subnet mask of slash 17. So similar way, if I take in one more example, slash 29, 8 bits, 8 bits, 8 bits. You know, 8, 3 is 24, 24 plus 5 becomes 29. So when I add 8 bits, 255, 255, 255, and then 248, I think so. Let me check. Uh, 4 bits is 240, so 8 bits, 248. I think I'm correct. So just confirm, 5 bits, nothing but 248. So some examples. So the finally, what I want to say is, whenever you see subnet mask, whenever you see the address in this format, you should be in a position to convert into equivalent network bits and host bits. Like when I say 255, 255, 255, 240.0, I should understand that okay, there are 8 bits, 8 bits, there are 4 bits, there are 4, which means it's nothing but slash 22, which means there are 22 network bits and remaining 10 are host bits. So this understanding is very important whenever you are uh, designing, whenever you see any production network scenarios, uh, whenever you see this diagram, so it's very important to have a clear idea on conversion of some submit mask into bits, this format. Similar way, whenever you see slash value, you should have a clear understanding on how many, what is the equivalent submit mask. These conversions are important, so probably you can take some examples like the examples which I wrote here. You can just uh, practice these examples to get your answers. So just take any any slash value, uh, anything less than 30, you can take and you can find the equivalent subnet mass. Okay. So these exercises will give some uh, good practice. Okay. So we are done with, up to now we are done with our FLSM calculations by using a C class. We did, we did some examples like in the first video we did, we did an example of requirement of 40 host. And in the next video, I, I also explain one more example with a requirement of 12 host, I think so. But you can practice with 30 host, any other numbers, just to have some practice. And next we have seen how they are different networks. We have seen that anything starting with 0 to 63 is one network if I use this submit mask. And if I use default submit mask, anything starting from 0 to 255 is one network. And how they are different, and I cannot use 64, I cannot use 128, I cannot use uh, 192 if I use this submit mask. Because we, according to this submit mask, these are network IDs and I cannot use network IDs and these are broadcast IDs. And whatever the addresses coming in between, those are the addresses which are valid addresses. Okay. And we have seen the difference on that. And then we have moved to some B class examples where we have seen how to write the range for bigger numbers. So whenever we write a range for bigger numbers, we have to use 2 to the power of H divided by 256. So based on that, it's, it's required. So you have to increment on the th third portion whenever you get any number more than 256 or less than 65,536. So similar way, the same thing we do for A class also. Like you can see, once you finish this part, you have to come to the next part and you have to write the same addresses. Some examples, again, you can, you can probably work on. And then finally, we have discussed some slash values. Slash value, that is something what you'll find in the documentations. In most of the scenario diagrams, you will not see the submit mask. And instead of subnet mask, we we define uh, the slash value. So slash value is nothing but representing your subnet mask, but it's a, another way or short way of writing your subnet mask. So you should be in a very good position to uh, know what is the equivalent subnet mask for this value and what is the, whenever you see subnet mask, you should be in a position to you know equivalent network bits and host bits. So these concepts, this understanding is very important. And finally, in the last session, the next session, which will be, discussing that session is going to explain you some shortcut methods of doing all these calculations but again remember one thing when before you get into that particular section you have to make sure that you are much comfortable with this all these things and not only understanding along with practicing because you know simply uh, listening to the class and and assuming that you understood all the concepts and you follow it it will not help you and you'll find it a little bit more problems especially when you start doing the things so when you start doing the things, you'll, you'll feel it more better. Okay, so I really suggest you to try some examples working on. You can you can possibly try the same examples what I used, okay, without seeing and in case if you find any difficulty, you can try some other examples. 
So try to make sure that you work on some at least two, three examples to make sure that you're much comfortable with these calculations. And in the last part, we are going to getting into some shortcut methods, VLSM, and, and also we'll discuss on how to solve bits, the questions, what, what type of questions you'll find in your examinations or in the interviews when you face in the written test, how to solve them and how we can save your time, a lot of time in solving this. What are the shortcut methods to apply that? But again, to master that particular shortcut method, you should master a step-by-step -step method that is mandatory. And many people have seen, they probably try to skip this step-by-step -step method once they, once they really uh, know the shortcut method. But I really strongly suggest you to just follow step-by-step -step method to have a more clear understanding. Because if you don't do this step-by-step -step method, you will have you still have uh, some confusions, which again in turn affect your shortcut method also. So which I really don't want. So probably once you master this step-by-step -step method, now the final thing is you need to only use shortcut method in the implementations, in the uh, in the examinations. You just need to use only shortcut methods finally. You don't really need to go with all the step-by-step -step method, but initially you have to follow. That is something which I strongly suggest you, okay? So probably I'll see you in the next video, okay? The next session where we'll get into some more advanced submitting, okay? Thank you.